How to how you do cousins, it's Rusty, guys. I'm going to take you on a journey with me. This is going to be a multi-video journey. I'm going to do a little bit of crafting. And not just crafting. Uh, actually, I'm going to be doing some art. Some painting, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's something I like to do for a hobby, for fun, from time to time. And uh, uh, Flo has uh, got my, me to help her with a couple of cousins. They're trying to decorate their room in Star Wars theme. Um, helping them out by putting some of my action figures in there for a bit while they're waiting to be sold. And now uh, they want me to paint uh, Han Solo in carbonite. It's hard to find stuff you can put up on the wall. They got these stickers and stuff, but they're so expensive. I said, I can do it cheaper. And it'll also be fun and we can, you know, talk about it on this video. So this is going to be part one of the series. I'm going to show you what I bought. I'm going to show you what I'm going to start painting on. And I'm going to talk through tactics of painting stuff. All right, here we go. Rusty, how to? All right, cousins. This is what we got so far. It's a beautiful little scene here, guys. It's uh, this is what this is. Is it is a stretcher. It is canvas, as you can see here. Um, if I wanted to buy this canvas, which is roughly two feet by five feet, uh. It's sitting here uh, horizontally right now because that's how the picture is, but obviously I'm going to be turning it up vertically because I'm going to be paint, painting Han Solo um, as he is in carbonite. And uh, if I wanted to buy this at uh, any kind of an art shop, this would have cost me anywhere from $60 on the low end all the way up to $90, maybe even $100 for the size of this canvas. Uh, but if you go to places like Ross, you'll find stuff like this uh, that's selling for real cheap, and I'll just hold this up and show you. This was one of the corners of this uh, picture. It, it says it was originally $35, and it was selling for $20. So what this is, is they have just printed a what had been a photograph on this, and it's a lovely little scene. It's just not what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do first off, first of all, I save myself quite a bit of money. I save, you know, 40 to 60 bucks by buying something that's already got a paint picture on it. So what I gotta do is I'm going to actually paint over this with a black acrylic paint. In fact, let me grab it and put it in my hands right here so you can see what I'm talking about. Right here, I also bought this from Ross, real cheap. It's just acrylic black opaque paint. This is gonna be plenty. It's gonna be enough to do this entire thing. It will, the good thing about acrylic paint is it's easy to work with and it dries really fast. So within 24 to 48 hours, this will be bone dry, maybe even by tomorrow, and I can get started. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to paint this whole thing in oil or in acrylic. Uh, I'm, I'm more familiar with and, and enjoy uh, painting in oil better because oftentimes when I start painting, I do lots of layers and it takes a lot of time. This is not something I want to spend a lot of time with, uh, so I probably will end up doing it with acrylics, but I'll let you know. Uh, but to begin with, I'm just going to coat this. I could do this in gesso and white, but I really, uh, for a painting that I'm not doing a lot of, um, you know, layers of translucent, uh, tinted stuff, uh, I'm actually going to use opaque colors because the whole picture is going to be a grayscale, black, whites, and grays. So, uh, let's get going and, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this right here and you can watch me Bob Ross style. All right, cousins, here we are. I got this up on the easel here. It's up vertically like it's supposed to be. So you can use any kind of thing. You can use a piece of cardboard. You could use a piece of wood thin. Uh, you could use uh, a piece of uh, plastic, clear plastic. Some people like to use um, clear pieces of plastic because whenever they're mixing stuff, particularly for uh, fallows and lakes and translucent paints, they like to be able to see through it a little bit and see what that'll look like um, if you're doing uh, tinting or different layers of, of uh, that sort of thing. But since I'm using opaque stuff, I'm just going to use a typical palette here. I'm going to take my black paint. I'm going to squirt a generous amount uh, of this on here, uh, on in onto uh, oh goodness, gross sounding. Come on now, okay, that's good for now. I'm gonna put that off to the side. I like to use for big paintings longer brushes like this, okay, and kind of stay my like loosey goosey with a little bit. You can see I got all my black uh paint on there, and I'm just gonna get into it here, people. Uh, there's a long line of people uh, who painted, who were artists. Um, some of my favorites tend to be more the Impressionists. Uh, 
Uh, I like impressionism. Uh, that's uh, you know partially impressionism, partially realism. Um, so I like you know Singer Sergeant. Um, I really love probably my favorite style uh, or favorite um, I guess uh, the art comes from a particular region would be the Dutch artists. Really love me some Vermeer. Uh, I love um, love me some Rembrandt stuff. Uh, as well um but uh you know i i like all kinds of art really um i like to paint with oil paint because um i just uh i really like working with it uh, i'm the kind of person who likes to work and likes to hustle and likes to get things done and whenever i'm doing something for fun just painting uh i like to slow down a little bit and just take my time uh, there's no reason why you got to rush something. Uh, I you you know used to work real hard and I'd spend a lot of time on something. I go back and I rework it over and over again. But I'm trying these days to be more loose with it. You know what I mean? And that's uh, helpful if you're trying to do impressionistic stuff. It doesn't have to be super tight. It can be a little bit loose. I you know my favorite kinds of paintings are ones that they're realistic enough that you know what they're trying to paint. But they, they basically only give you, I don't know, 70-80% of the idea. And your mind and your imagination has to fill in the rest. And I love stuff that you get up close to it and it's looking real splotchy and goopy and, uh, you know, a lot of movement. Then you back up and it looks super nice, super realistic from a distance. That's my favorite kind of stuff, people. Now, I say that only to tell you kind of what I'm into. That is not what this painting is going to be. This painting is going to be, um, it's going to be a smaller version than uh, the original one because obviously it's not a full life size. I mean, it's five foot. Uh, but we're going to have to work off of a, a scale, proportions here. I'm going to have to scale it down a little bit. The thing that I like about putting this in black is that when I come back later and uh, I do my drawing on here, right, uh, that pencil, and I haven't decided what I'm going to use yet. If I'm going to use like a, uh, I, I may end up using just like a white, uh, like a white pencil uh, on this black. That'll show up real well and give me a real good idea, a guide, a template for what I'm going to, I'm going to do. Uh, as you can see that what I'm doing here is is working out real nicely. It's it's making it nice and dark black. Uh, then I don't have to worry about this picture underneath. And no offense to this uh, photographer, this artist. Uh, it, like I said, it is a lovely picture. Uh, but uh, I was really just trying to, to find a way to save a little bit of money. And if you're an artist out there, if you're someone creative and you like to do art, I would especially say if you're new to art and you're trying to get into it, and you, you know, you want to be uh, price conscious and you want to try to find some uh, the, the good price for materials, I encourage you to go to a store like Ross uh, or TJ Maxx or some of these places because you can buy a lot of these art supplies a lot of times uh, that are still brand new but at really good discounted prices. Um, there's no reason why you need to, uh, to to jump all in head first and spend tons of money when you can uh, get things for a really uh, you know low cheap price um, and as long as you're okay knowing that uh, underneath of your piece of art is someone else's art that no one will ever see again or know is there as long as you're okay with that then it's not a problem because no one else is ever gonna know and especially since this was a particular one I'm working with was a photograph it was like a screen printed thing there is no texture uh, this is not uh, what they call a I don't know how you pronounce it jacle or I've heard it pronounced multiple different ways but that's basically they'll take an, a print of something and they'll put it on canvas but then they also apply a particular type of texture and since we're on that topic guys uh, that's a little tip and it takes practice, it takes work to know uh, how to identify it. But uh, if you go out sourcing and you're interested in art 
and you, uh, you find some paintings or some stuff on canvas, do not just assume that it is an actual original uh, oil or acrylic painting because uh, with technology these days, they can put prints like photographs like this one on linen, on canvas. They can put, uh, and they also can apply various types of textures to make it appear to the untrained eye that it is an actual uh, painting when in fact it is not an original, it is a, a print. And so, kind of one of the tricks with that is that uh, whenever they apply that type of texture, oftentimes it is very uniform and very consistent across the entire thing. And so, when you look at that, it also oftentimes has kind of like a swirl, kind of a stroke, almost like a half circle all over it. Um, and that is kind of a tell tale sign that that is not an original uh, painting. They do that a lot of times with uh, very well-known historical uh, masters, old masters artwork. They will take prints, make them, and, uh, and then they'll apply texture to make it appear as though uh, it is a real painting. Uh, I've not, I come across those a lot. I never buy them. Uh, every once in a while, I will, however, buy a painting that is a copy, but is an actual authentic oil painting that is a copy of something else. If it's good quality, which I'll probably show you in a future video. All right, I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to flip this sucker over, and we're going to start on the other side. i got to, I got to step back over here, guys. Um, I've used about three quarters of the original amount of paint that I dropped on here. I'm not mixing it with anything. I'm just doing it straight up uh, black. And thus far, I'm not seeing a whole lot of areas that I'll even have to re redo or go back over. Again, I'll be layering paint, opaque paint, on the top of this. Opaque just means, uh, you know, you can't see through it. And since I'm doing this in a black, like a gray scale, black, whites, and uh, a mixture of the two, uh, you're not going to be able to see through that anyways. Uh, but this is just in case, like around the uh, central figure, uh, if uh, I didn't want anybody to see that there was color of any kind in the background here because um, I may be mistaken, but I do not believe that behind Han Solo and Carbonite was a picture of palm trees and a beautiful ocean seascape scene. Uh, if, if it was, please correct me and let me know, but uh, it's not something I'm aware of. So I didn't want that bleeding through because that kind of messes up the whole jive, the whole uh, theme of this uh, picture to begin with. Um, so as you can see, it's nice. It's coming up, uh, coming out real nicely. I'm going to have a really good slate to begin with here. What I have yet to do after this, of course, the next step, and I could have honestly done this first, is to, uh, and I'll probably actually do this to put it at the, the end of this video so you can see. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about with Han Solo, it is a Star Wars character. Uh, he was first introduced... Uh, in the original series, uh, A New Hope, which would be episode four, I believe, in the series. And uh, he is a, uh, he's a smuggler, right? So he takes stuff for people. He, they pay him and he, he uh, takes it and transports it other places for a fee. And, uh, you know, he was not originally a fighter. Uh, he ended up uh, crossing paths, obviously, with... with uh, Luke and Obi-Wan and they needed to hitch a ride someplace and then that pulled Han and uh, Chewie into the whole uh, That whole saga there and the rest as you know is history, but uh, Anyways, a cool little thing. They make these action figures uh, Out there and stuff of all these and I, I look for them to resell. They sell real well so uh, I know most people out there know about Star Wars most people are uh, our fans, so I don't have to tell you, but uh, I cannot wait, guys. And uh, again, this is Flo, uh, Flo, who is, um, you know, a, a kind of on, on again, off again girlfriend of mine. Um, she has these little cousins, and they were decorating their room in a Star Wars theme, and so uh, she asked uh, that I would uh, put something together. The cost of this stuff uh, is, is staggering sometimes. Uh, if you want to buy stuff uh, that's decorated uh, like Star Wars, it can get quite pricey. And so 
why not take a break from the warehouse? Take a break. It's good to take some mental health time. Do some things that you enjoy. Guys, uh, take care of yourselves out there. It's good to work hard. And, uh, and, and in the reselling business, it's true that the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And uh, anybody who thinks that uh, reselling is easy uh, is just flat out wrong. If you want to be good at it and make a lot of money, you've got to work real hard. You're running your own business. And uh, as anyone out there who has started or run their own business can tell you, um, especially in the beginning, especially in the beginning, it's even more work than working for a, a traditional job, nine to five for somebody else. Because there's, you've got to wear lots of different hats. I have lots of different hats, but I'm speaking metaphorically, of course. Um, so anyhow, uh, but it is good to take a break uh, I'm still in the warehouse at, at my place of work, but uh, I'm in level double H, uh, row 57 uh, today, and uh, I like this section. This is on the north side uh, because, uh, you know, it's quiet down here. Not a lot of people get down here. Uh, Peaches uh, is actually outsourcing today. Uh, he's got some sourcing to do, and he's got some uh, shipping to do. For us, and uh, I've also got some packaging shipping I got to do tomorrow, so I might actually make a video uh, taking you uh, into that again. It's kind of it's kind of boring to some people sometimes, but you know what? For people who are new to the reselling uh, business, or even if it's not a business, it's just a side thing, one of the first questions or things you may not know how to do is how, like the best way to package, the best way to uh, get your shipping done, because that's a very important part of the business. You've got to uh, uh, selling it, you know, taking photographs, researching it, getting the product, all that's important, but you've got to deliver on the, the item at the end. If you don't do that, then it's all, you know, it's not worth it. Okay, so I've completed, as you can see, uh, the whole front here. It's all entirely black. That's going to look so cool when it's on the wall. Um, so what I need to do now is kind of go along the sides, paint some of those sides. I won't, uh, I'll do some of this, but uh, I'll tell you a couple more things, but, uh, and then, uh, what we can do is talk a little bit about the next couple of stages. You know, back in uh, uh, 74, when I was uh, a cheerleader at Notre Dame, uh, you know, I was one of the, I was one of three male cheerle cheerleaders at the time. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, my core strength was just like, as be best it's ever been at that time. Uh, it's not as great today. Uh, I need to do more exercise than I do, but I'm always running around here at the warehouse. Um, you know, uh, one of the ways that I would uh, kind of deal with the stress of the expectations, and I mean, you had to be on. You had to be uh, on your game. You had to know all the moves because, I mean, you got you got these uh, these women who, uh, you know, they're flinging their, their whole bodies up in the air, and they're, uh, they're entirely dependent upon you to catch them, uh, you know, in the air, and Man, you drop one of those little suckers on the ground and they get an injury, that's on you. That's on you, friend. And uh, and I did not want that, uh, you know, to have to deal with that. So I had to work real hard and that, there was a lot of pressure there. So sometimes what I would do before a big game is I would get out uh, my paint, my paints, and, uh, you know, I'd do a picture. And so that's partly why I've got this uh, jacket on right now, folks. Uh, this is my, uh, I'll show it to you here. This is my... Uh, from my alma mater, uh, Notre Dame, and uh, this is me. You know, I was a cheerleader. I mean, this is, I mean, check this out. This is this is legit here, and it still fits, believe it or not. Uh, so anyhow, um, this takes me back, gives me good memories. I like to sometimes come over and uh, and uh, wear this jacket when I'm painting because, dug on it, uh, it just makes me feel good thinking about reminiscing about the old days. You know what I'm talking about? Mm, trying to get up here, this very top part here on the side. Um, this is working now so easily and so nicely, and I'm not even really having to use all that much paint. Uh, I spent two dollars and ninety-five cents on this tube of uh, two ninety-nine, as you can see, Ross again, two dollars ninety-nine cents. So I am with paint. And, uh, and this paint, honestly, will probably be enough to paint uh, with the other colors the rest of the picture. So $20 for the canvas, $2.99 for the black paint, and it'll probably be another $2.99 for the white paint. I'll mix those together. So we're at six, we're about base $26 uh, for a Han Solo and Carbonite. Now, 
Uh, can everybody do this? No. Some people can't paint and don't know how to paint. I have a lot of practice and that's why I'm able to do it, but I will certainly give you tips and tell you as we get a little bit further in it. But let me finish up this uh, edge. Over. All right, let's take a look at this painting. Man, I mean, look at that. Ooh, it's just gorgeous. I don't know what to say. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, it's like I'm looking into this abyss. I have done an absolutely incredible thing here. I mean, just look at this. But there's so much going on. I mean, I mean, look at this spot right here, guys. Where this little street comes in, it totally breaks up this whole area here. You got this on this section here. You got this line coming up, uh, but it ends. Why does it end? Where was it going? You just can't tell. Meanwhile, on this side, you got these little spots over here that are kind of like streaking down and almost like lightning bolts, but they're straight. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be afraid. Um, now, the shimmer of the light on the other side over there it breaks it up. So, you know, what's hiding over on this side? I don't know. Whew. I mean, I just, I'm having an emotional experience here a little bit. I kind of, I almost feel like, like maybe I'm done. Well, thanks so much for tuning in, cousins. Guys, this was an awesome uh, first step. Uh, it's amazing what just a, a little palette, a little bit of paint and a brush can do. Am I right? Next up, we're going to be looking at uh, how to sketch it out and get prepared for actually painting the, the, uh, the actual primary uh, figure in here, which in this case is uh, carbonized Han Solo from Star Wars. Uh, guys, if you like this kind of thing, please check out other stuff on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't before, and just look around. we got lots of cool stuff. We'll see you next time, cousins. Rusty, rusty, rusty how to.